on to the next presentation on uh, Red Cloud Security's Oktoberfest uh, conference. It gives me pleasure to introduce Pierre Leveille, who is the president and CEO of Deep South Resources, a company that is advancing a major project, copper project, in, uh, in a very good jurisdiction, Namibia, in, uh, in Southwest Africa. Uh, look, I am going to go through some brief disclosures on behalf of uh, Deep South as well as Red Cloud Securities, and then I'm going to pass it on to, to Pierre to uh, go into the presentation. From the company, from Deep South's perspective, you can see their disclosures on page two of the presentation in front of you. For Red Cloud Securities, I would highlight that this webinar is for information purposes only and should not be considered a solicitation to purchase or sell securities or a recommendation to buy or sell securities. And we note that this webinar does not take into account the particular situation or needs of individual investors. Participate, participants should rely on their own investigative work to make their own investment decisions. And with that out of the way, Pierre, please take over. And I look forward to hearing what you have to say about Deep South. Thank you. Um, welcome, everyone. I'm Pierre Leveille, President and CEO of Deep South, as Andrew just mentioned it. Um, we are advancing a world-class copper project to feasibility study. Uh, next slide, please. Another one next, please. We are, uh, we own a uh, large copper porphyry deposit in the south of Namibia. Namibia is a very low risk mining friendly jurisdiction. It's a tier one project with strong economics for development. Uh, it's amenable to uh, low cost bio heap leaching and we've recently uh, completed some metallurgical work where we add some recoveries up to 96% copper. Uh, it's, as I said, it's a massive project. It's 3.12 billion pounds of copper indicated and 2.28 uh, pounds uh, inferred. Uh, at, you will see that uh, also we have a strong potential to increase size and grade of the resource. Uh, we are currently strongly undervalued. We trade at 0 0.0012 uh, dollar, US dollar per pound of copper, which is an 81% discount to our peer group. Uh, and we have a proven leadership. The management of the company is well in place to uh, develop that project correctly. Uh, in May, we uh, have issued a uh, robust uh, PEA uh, where we have shown uh, an NPV of uh, 950 million US with an IRR of near 30% uh, at a price of copper of $3 per pound. Of, per pound. Um, we will now advance the project toward feasibility, and the first step is uh, a, pro uh, a program of infill drilling, 12,000 meters, uh, to expand the grade and the resource on a section that we call the I-grade section, where we have some intercept up to 150 meter from 0.50 to 1% copper. So it's really a, a high-grade project. That will be forward, followed, uh, for, you know, followed by some more metallurgical work uh, and uh, also to complete the mining, engineering, design, and environmental impact study. Next slide, please. The... Um, just in a nutshell, briefly, the, the company is owned at the moment. Uh, the, the structure is uh, Tech Resources owns 21% of the company, and the uh, uh, management and directors own 19% of the company. The rest is the uh, free flow. Uh, next slide, please. Second. Uh, yeah, as I said, it's a very large property. It's 370 uh, square kilometers. It's uh, very near good infrastructure. So on that side, we don't have a, a, a big issue. It's, uh, uh, it's very well situated. So next slide, please. Just in a nutshell, briefly, Namibia is a very low risk and mining friendly country. It's governed by a stable parliamentary, par parliamentary democracy since uh, uh, independence and it has an independent judi judiciary system. It's a very transparent system for mineral and surface title. 
Uh, it's ranked uh, number one in perception amongst, amongst uh, African countries and 14 globally in the 2019 Fraser uh, uh, Mining uh, Institute uh, Mining Survey. And uh, uh, the, it's ranked uh, very uh, highly ranked. Normally it's, uh, normally it's number two uh, in Africa, ranked by the uh, uh, IMF and the World Bank. It has excellent infrastructure inherited from the past, from uh, you know their their relation with South Africa. Uh, it's uh, also the you know the, the mining is a very very important business for them because it's twenty five percent of GDP and fifty percent of the export. Next slide, please. You will see that the uh, looking at that small map that the uh, uh, project is situated in completely in the south of Namibia. It's very nearby the Orange River where. Uh, it's the, the border between South Africa and Namibia, and it's about 10, 15 kilometers from the project. That's where we will uh, pump and pipeline the water for an eventual production. You can see also the black line crossing the concession to the west side. It's uh, the main commercial road coming from Cape Town, South Africa, and going, you know, crossing all Namibia. So in terms of transportation, it's fine too. Uh, along that road, there's a, a low uh, low uh, voltage uh, uh, grid, uh, power grid. The main power grid is uh, for high voltage is about 85 kilometers from the project. In the PEA, we have estimated that we uh, pay for all the capex to connect to that grid, uh, but in general, the government of Namibia is sharing some cost in there, so it will certainly improve a little bit our economics on that side. Uh, one thing which is very important, it's a very sunny area, we're talking of near 360 days of, of sun per year. So uh, at the feasibility study, it's for sure that we will assess the uh, solar power to, uh, uh, you know, to see uh, uh, how we can, you know, reduce our dependency from the uh, grid of the government. Next slide, please. The project came with uh, 66,000 meters of drilling done ma mainly by you know, major companies such as Rio Tinto, Falcon Bridge, Tech Resources, and Deep South together. Uh, we did a lot of meteorological tests, geophysical surveys, and you know, a lot of exploration has been done there. Even a feasibility study done by Mintroc in, uh, in uh, the mid-90s. Uh, at the moment, the 4311 resource is 457 uh, tons, million tons of ore at a grade of 0.31% copper, and the the uh, uh, inferred resource is three, uh, 342 million tons at 0.29 percent. It's uh, what we can see on that map here. It's a cross section of the uh, of the uh, past drilling and the drilling that we have completed with tech. Also, the drilling was done and the resource is estimated from surface down to 350 meter. But we can see also that with tech we have drilled down to 800 meters and it's still mineralized are uh, arriving there and you can see also some high grade patches uh, between 350 and about 600 uh, meters. So uh, what we know from that drilling is that we can increase the tonnage substantially, maybe double the tonnage that we have at the moment. It's a pretty large footprint. It's two kilometers by one kilometer. So it's a very, very large depositional area. One of the thing which is very important is that the Drilling is done in general vertical and is spaced by 150 meters. Most of the companies that have uh, explored the project in the past were chasing tonnage. So they were happy to increase the grid all the time and have it spaced by a quite large distance. Uh, but what it did is that they missed quite a lot of the high grade, uh, uh, high grade areas in doing this. They knew that there was high grade areas, but it was lined up for, for you know, uh, future detailed work. So we're now in the future and we're doing the detailed work. And what we're, we're seeing here is that uh, we, uh, the, the uh, structures that are controlling the high grade pods have never been identified uh, in the past. So we've done quite a lot of work in the past year to identify these structures. And we found many shear zones and faulting system that in general tends to be vertical or near vertical. So when you drill space by 150 meter vertical, you miss quite a lot of that high grade material. When we started drilling in angle, we've hit more of that high grade material. So uh, the plan now is to go into the 
high grade section first to uh, uh, start you know finding more of that high grade uh, material so we we uh, we know that now that with the, these discoveries we know that we have a, a strong potential to increase the grade we have also done some metallurgical work uh, and it was based on a bio uh, assisted e bleaching uh, we had recoveries up to 96% the reason why we went to bio assisted leaching is that the project has a specific mineralogy and it's primary sulfide uh, that contains 98% of chalcopyrite and the rest is very, uh, you know, little uh, boronite and uh, some oxidized urea, but very thin sheets. So what you see, uh, uh, so we were, we were in need of finding the right technology to match with the ore and the mineralogy that we have there. And it's known because the uh, the uh, the bioassisted leaching is a robust technology and you know, proven since over 40 years, and it's known to be efficient with simple mineralogies, and that's what we have in uh, in Hybe. It's very simple. There's uh, just a charcoal pyrite mainly that the uh, bacteria as will will uh, uh, focus for uh, extraction of the uh, the metal. And uh, it does not contain any deleterious elements uh, like uh, arsenic, uranium, borium. So it's uh, very helpful in the system. It's also very low acid consumption. Sorry for that. I just want to address that. It's next slide, please. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, I forgot to m mention that. And uh, it's very low acid consumption. So that's very helpful because it's... Uh, it uh, uh, saved quite a lot of money uh, on the operational cost. Uh, the reason for that is because there's a high content in, uh, in pyrite in the system, and the pyrite self-generates sulfuric acid when it's, uh, when it's uh, leaching. The other thing which is very important is the possibility to use uh, high-pressure grinding rollers. We've tested that, and... Uh, the material is pretty hard, it's granite, but because it's a very old porphyry, it's 1.8 million years old, uh, the rock has, has you know, transformed over all these billion years, and uh, it's now metamorphic rock. And what it does is that it's a little bit softer than a typical granite, and it crushes very well, and it, the, going to the HPGR, it crushes very well too. So we can then reduce the size of the uh, of the material down below below uh, five millimeters without any uh, extra cost, and uh, which is very important because grinding and milling sometimes is uh, very high cost, so we don't need to use that. And uh, then we uh, we just have to agglomerate the material to make sure that it will uh, uh, leach correctly, and that's what we see here. We had some very very good results on that. Uh, next slide, please. The uh, Recent PEA was based on mainly on the uh, bioassisted leaching, and what you can see there is uh, uh, using only the indicated resource. Uh, it's a life of mine of 24 years, but uh, as we know, we can increase the tonnage substantially. We know it's going to be at the end of the day very a lot longer than that. Uh, we have uh, we have used the the 0.31% uh, copper, the, the grade of the indicated resource. It's for a throughput of 20 million tons per annum. We have a strip ratio very low at 1.41 to 1. And we were we have used a copper recovery of 80%. We, we have to be conservative on that side because at the uh, mining operation, the, the nice grades that we, the nice recoveries that we had in columns will certainly reduce uh, by at least 5%. Um, the operational cost, as I said, is uh, uh, previously is one dollar thirty-four per pound of copper, and the initial capex is three hundred forty million dollars. But at three dollars per pound of copper, uh, as mentioned previously, we have a very uh, interesting I, uh, uh, NPV at nine hundred fifty million US, and the IRR is thirty percent after tax. But now keep in mind, if we can increase the grade from point thirty one percent higher than that, then it will have an impact immediately on the uh, the economics of the project. So at the moment, this base case is the bottom that we can reach because there's a lot of things we can still do to improve uh, the, the grade, the strip ratio, uh, certainly, and potentially the uh, recoveries also. So uh, there, there's a lot that can be done there. Next slide, please. 
That's a footprint of the center of the deposit where we have identified a uh, high-grade area. Uh, it's, uh, there's quite a lot of very good intercepts of, uh, uh, from, from the past uh, historical drilling. We can see some grades uh, up to uh, between 0.50% and up to 1.21% with, with extension of 150 meter, going up to 150 meters. So now the idea is, is to... Uh, that's the plan. We, the money that we've uh, raised recently, we've just closed a second tranche uh, last Monday, uh, will serve to start an infill drilling program on that specific area to define a better grade for the, uh, this, uh, this specific area and also uh, develop a measured resource over the area. Now, the new grade that we will have for that area will certainly have an influence on the overall grade of the project. So it will improve you know, the overall project at the same time, and it will improve the economics of the, uh, the PEA. Next slide, please. We uh, can see here a cross section of pit number one, which is one part of the, uh, the higher grade area. Uh, the reason why I show that, that uh, section, that cross section is that we have an adit that has been dug there. And when we looked at the right side of the adit, the drilling was spaced by 50 meter, and we can see that we have it a lot more uh, high grade material than on the left side, where uh, there's still high grade, but uh, in in uh, uh, drilling by 150 meters spaced, it's uh, we hit a lot less uh, high grade material. So we have to infill drill these areas to cover, uh, you know, what we have missed in the past. We see also that it's. Uh, uh, we see also that it's uh, when in drilling an angle, as we see it in uh, uh, under the adit and below the adit, we hit a lot more high grade material. So the plan now is to infill drill that area. And in some cases where we have identified the shear zone and faulting system, for some cases we will drill an angle. So basically, that's in a nutshell, that's what we are. And we embark on that feasibility study. Uh, and uh, we will go to the uh, uh, drilling pretty soon, and that will be followed by for you know more metallurgical work and uh, design engineering. So it's a project that will deliver quite a lot of added value in the coming one and two, you know, one or two years, uh, because uh, we we're pretty confident of what we will deliver with the drilling, and after that with the metallurgical test work. So that's about it. If you have any uh, future question or if you want more information, you're welcome to visit our website at deepsouthresources.com. Thank you so much. You have a nice day. All right. Thank you very much, Pierre. I've got, uh, I've got one question, um, a question from the audience just asking, um, you know, what's tech's commitment here um, from a perspective of being a major shareholder? Um, were they involved in the recent financing? Um, and um, can you tell us um, what you think their headspace is, I guess, is the best way to put it? Uh, Tech was involved in the project for a period of time, and the, uh, it was the only project they had in Africa. So they decided at some point for internal reason to uh, uh, not be operating in Africa, for, at least for, for a certain period of time. And uh, that's where we got back their interest in the project and convert that into shares. They're still very interested in the project. At the moment, they're passive shareholder and they, uh, they let us go and they will want to see us how we will develop the project before taking final decisions. They have not participated in the uh, recent financing because just before that financing, uh, we've converted the debt that we were having with them into shares. So uh, they, you know, recently they have, let's say, participated in, in, in some financing in a way that has, you know, enabled us to not pay them some, some debt with cash. You know. So um, just uh, we've got a few seconds left. Um, you know, the flow sheet that you've got is very typical of the kind of flow sheet that uh, we see with the Chilean uh, operations where you mm -hmm. produce a copper cathode. Um, and, you know, quite often... Um, at similar grades with some of the, the SXEW um, operations in Chile. Yeah. Um, I guess the question I have is um, the copper sulfate as a, as a product as well. Can you just quickly tell us why that's a product and it's not all co copper cathode? Uh, the, the main reason is because copper sulfate is an added value product. It's about 25% okay. va in value over the uh, 
the uh, uh, over the cathodes. So, but it's a smaller market, so we have to be careful in not thinking we will produce only sulfate. It's not possible. All right, that, that's perfect. Thank you very much for clarifying that, um, Pierre. Thank you very much for uh, presenting and uh, and from all of us at uh, Red Cloud. Thanks. Thanks for the update. Thanks to you, Ab, and have a nice day.